Welcome to the MidwestSports.net channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today on the summit with me is Danny Welniak, and she is the sports director at KCTV5 in Kansas City. And I know you have a lot of things going on. This time of year is very busy, not just with the holiday season, but with all the different sports and all the things that you all cover there. But I don't want to bury the lead, and the lead is this, that you are going to be broadcasting at the Cure Bowl. You'll be the color analyst and part of what is the first all-female national radio broadcast crew. So talk about that and what that means. Yeah, it's an absolute blessing that I'm even getting this opportunity. So uh, they approached me a couple months ago about being the color analyst for the Cure Bowl, and we didn't know who was going to be in it yet. It's Liberty and Georgia Southern now, which is history-making all in and of itself. Um, it's the first football game played at Exploria Stadium down there in Orlando. So a whole bunch of history being made, and I am so lucky and blessed and excited to be a part of it. And I, I've I've never done uh, color analysis for a radio broadcast before, which might seem a little bit crazy. I did a little bit of um, color analysis when I was on the sideline with the Chiefs radio network, but it wasn't after every single play. I think I've broken it down as I've been doing my studying to each game ends up with about a hundred ish 120 snaps per game so you have to have something to say after every single snap after you know every play whether you're breaking it down whether you're commenting on how the game flow is going and so it's going to be something different it's going to be a different kind of animal but I think the Lord opened this door for me for um, a very good reason and I think it's also a big opportunity to be able to show not just um, Liberty fans and Georgia Southern fans that women can broadcast sports but also anybody who's thinking about tuning into just a college bowl game so uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I think it's going to be excellent to be able to do it with two incredibly talented women um, as well so I, I, I really 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 look forward to it on Saturday. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that, and I wanted to talk about that and, and even go that direction because this is a first, and it is something very special, and, and not to downplay that at all, but I hope that this may be even a, another step toward where people have the opportunity to use the gifts and the talents that God's given them, the particular skill sets, whether it be male or female, and, and that this does come to the place where this is not something that's a first time anymore. It's an, uh, a regular occurrence. Yeah, I. when this doesn't become making history, then we know that we've done our jobs. And I'm looking forward to the fact that, you know, you see color analysts on TV like Tony Romo or on the radio like Kurt Warner, the former NFL quarterbacks who have been out there and played with those guys and bring an excellent and amazing perspective to the right. broadcast booth. But... I don't think that we've had a woman just yet who's played the sport before who can bring that same kind of analysis. And no, I'm not putting myself up there with Kurt Warner and Tony (laughs) Romo, just so everybody uh, is very clear on that. They are much more experienced and much, much better than I am. But I hope that I can be just a small piece of that because I played the sport. I was a slot receiver and a running back. So I believe that I have that kind of experience, that kind of vision to be able to break down these two teams, what they're doing, not only, you know, the linebacking core or, you know, breaking down a cover two defense, but also be able to show you what the running backs are looking for out of a gun option offense or out of a spread offense even. So I think that my perspective is a little different than most women that you'd have in the broadcast booth. And to be a color analyst and to be able to lean on that experience I think it's going to be a different experience for listeners as well. So I I think it's going to be fun. Well, it should be, and I'm looking forward to it as well. And and that is something that that needs to be brought out. You did actually play the game. You played with the Dallas Diamonds uh, 10 or 11 years ago, uh, played with some championship teams, won a world championship as well. And not that far removed, I bet you could still play. I'll bet you could still run up and down the field right now I, I if you still wanted run to. Pretty good forty, although I am I am embarrassed to tell anyone what my time is now. It used to be fantastic. <laughs> I was one of the quickest people out there, but and that was my my bread and butter was my speed when I played and my quickness. So um, I, I can still play some good flag football. I, taking those hits though, I think I'm, I'm <laughs> glad I'm retired from having to uh, take a few knocks to the head anymore. 
Well, we're speaking now with Danny Welniak, retired professional football player yes. <laughs> and also the sports director at KCTV5. Uh, Danny, I know that we had the opportunity to meet a few years back when our times at Oklahoma State University overlapped. You were a graduate from 2011. I was mm-hmm. a graduate of 2012. And, and I know that that, that situation and, and being there and learning there was instrumental, I believe, in, in getting you to where even you are right now. I believe it's a fantastic journalism broadcasting school, and the degree now has media and strategic communications in the name. I think I was in the last class that got journalism broadcasting actually on my degree itself, but it's a great school, and when we were there, it was one of only a number, I mean a handful of schools in the country that offered a sports media track. I think when, mm-hmm. when I was looking into it uh, in the early 2010s and even back to 2008 and 2009, there were only like four. And right. so that was a, that's a great school, but it offered a lot to its students, and I think that uh, those students have been able to be placed in great positions like you. Yeah, I think that that sports media option slash track was the big reason why I went to Oklahoma State. And I tell people that you don't necessarily have to spend the big bucks and go to a Missouri or a Syracuse or go far away from home to be able to get a degree like this and to be able to be successful in this field. It is ultimately about the person that you are, and it's about getting your hands, I like to say dirty, getting that hands-on experience anywhere that you can. At Oklahoma State, we were able to write for the newspaper. We were able to do radio stuff, play-by-play for um, the sports media club. Um, You also had the opportunity to be in front of a camera a lot and shoot a lot of things. I mean, I did ESPN freelance work and Fox Sports freelance work when they came into Stillwater for football games or basketball games or um, we even did a lot of behind the scenes work for the Jumbotron. Um, right. We called it our Roscoe program. And it made me able to jump into the real world, guns blazing, head down, full force, because I knew what I was doing already, because I had already done all of that. So I highly recommend Oklahoma State and the smaller schools to get your hands on experience because you're not fighting against the crowds of other kids who want to go into sports who want to go into journalism and I think that was a huge blessing for me and the fact that I got a class with Dave Hunziker who's the voice of the Cowboys <laughs> yes he brought so much to the table um, of that not only learning the stuff of th- the small things about being on air whether it's radio or television but he also taught us the stuff off air and the things that we needed to consider behind the scenes that makes you so successful in the broadcast journalism world. So I remember when I first took that class, he told all of his students to write down what their one big goal is, like one crazy goal out there and why you want to be in this industry. And I wrote down that I wanted to be the first female color analyst for an NFL game. And obviously that happened last year with the Amazon streaming in the NFL and uh, them getting that opportunity. But I think that this opportunity to be a color analyst for the Cure Bowl is pretty dang close. So I would say praise the Lord, man, because (laughs) he has created um, something that I never thought was ever going to be possible in my lifetime. That is incredibly cool. And and being at OSU, by the way, when we were there, the, the Pokes are still doing well, and, and I want to talk about that in just a moment. But uh, I, I don't think it's a coincidence. The two years I was there during the Brandon Whedon time, uh, yes. Oklahoma State was 23-2 and two in my two years on campus. So I don't think that's a coincidence at all. It, okay, nope. it probably is, but no, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to say it's not. But uh, and, and having a class with Dave Hunsiker, oh, my goodness, that oh. – that made it all worthwhile in, in going up there and being there. So shout out to you, Dave. Thank you very much for all that, that you have done and that you can continue to do. Well, Danny, I, I know that your career has been fantastic. And, and from Oklahoma State to Western Kansas, you spent a number of years in Wichita, did uh, fantastic work there, and you're in Kansas City right now. But if you, you look through your bios, one thing is consistent, and it talks about faith and family first and and i read actually on on one of them where it says god family friends and then sports and clearly sports is is a big part of your life so if that is a big part how much bigger are those other areas yeah well i i usually tell people that i live by my three pillars it's faith family and then football which is also a metaphor for my career and for sports um but i i've told people that those priorities are so important. And a lot of people in this industry don't talk about that, even if they are 
Christians or believers. And it's one of those things that if any of those ever get out of order, the good Lord has found a way to humble me and to get those <laughs> right back in their places. Because if he doesn't come first, um, you kind of have lost your way and you've lost the reason that you do this. And ultimately, that's why I am in this industry is because I feel like I, I am his vessel and I am able to provide a platform that a lot of other Christians don't get the opportunity to do and to show the stories of a lot of these athletes who they are behind the helmets and behind the numbers. And I don't think a whole lot of journalists really go out of their way to make that a reality. And I hope that I bring that to the table um, by my priorities and by putting God first. And it is a really difficult industry to get into. It's an even more difficult industry to stay in and be <laughs> successful as yes. both male and female. I mean, it does not matter your gender because it is so competitive. And there have been many times that I have found myself on my knees praying because I don't understand the direction that he's sending me and I don't understand why one thing's not working out or why I'm stuck in one place and why, you know, this person gets to go to ESPN and I'm still stuck here in Dodge City. What what do you <laughs> want from me, God? Like I don't understand. And hindsight is 2020, but in all of these instances I've been able to look back or you know what I should say most of these instances there are still a lot of things that you're still in the working. middle of something yes he's still <laughs> working on me and working on my heart um, but there are a lot of instances that I look back and I think you know what I, I knew that you were working for my good and I trust you completely with my future and with these opportunities that you're presenting before me and this is definitely one of them I have spent the last two weeks doing nothing but Liberty and Georgia Southern homework but I have to remember that, you know, I got to still wake up and I still got to do my devotional. I still got to get into right. into the Bible and listen to what he wants from me and ultimately give it to him. And and don't mis misplace my priorities while I'm trying to, you know, do something that feels so big to me. We can learn so much from that. We really can. And and I know that if, if the you and I both spent time talking about all of those things that you mentioned and all of the things that why did this happen here? And you see a little bit more later on down the line, this, this podcast or, or broadcast would go six, seven, ten hours well beyond what people would be watching at that <laughs> point. But I do know this, it's, it's almost always a lot more fun to look at it from the hindsight and go, yes, that, that is why I went through yeah. this to get to where I am right now. And, and God was always looking out for me the whole time, everywhere when it didn't seem like it maybe as much, he always was. And that's incredibly cool. Well, Listen, Danny. Let's let's talk sports just a little bit as we wind down here. Speaking down with speaking now with Danny Welniak, the sports director at KC TV Five in Kansas City. Okay, put your sports cap on for just a moment, and we'll hit some topics quickly. Then, Terrell Suggs picked up by the Chiefs just yesterday. How big is that? The longtime Ravens linebacker coming to be a part of a Chiefs team that is looking to make a run in the playoffs. Then, of course, there is the Jayhawks on a nine-game winning streak right now, and now the number one team in the country, Devon Dotson, the Big 12 Player of the Week. And then finally, your alma mater, Oklahoma State, for the 14th consecutive year playing in a bowl game. Yeah, go Pokes. Uh, playing in a bowl <laughs> game against Texas A&M in the Texas Bowl on December 27th. Ready, go. Okay, so we're starting with Terrell Suggs. I think it's a good pickup for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, they were the ones who were actually rewarded in this whole thing because they had the worst record of the four teams that wanted to claim him off of waivers. So uh, there are a lot of national analysts out there that are a little upset about it because they think that the Chiefs are trying to uh, get him just because they might face the Ravens in the playoffs and he's going to provide all sorts of um, wisdom to break down Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore defense. I don't know. I, I know that that's what they do in the NFL. They pick each other's brains like crazy. Right. But um, I think it's a good move because with Okafor now out, he has a torn peck. Ogba's out. Um, they need somebody opposite Frank Clark who's going to be able to to rush um, from the outside and be an edge rusher who can actually get some pressure on quarterbacks going into the postseason. So big pickup for them. He may not be you know the the main guy that they're relying on. He's a little bit older, but he's at least got. He's got the NFL experience. He's been in the NFL for 17 years. He's a really good player, so we know he can bring that to the table. As for Kansas, 
number one team in the nation. Yay! Jayhawk fans get excited, but right around the corner, they have Villanova, who's number 18 <laughs> on Saturday. So pump the brakes. Um, it could be, it's going to be a good matchup. Could be interesting to see how long they actually stay at number one, considering there have been five number ones this year already, which is it's the most amazing before the calendar year even changes to the next year. So, yes. uh, whether you want to be number one or not, I'm not sure. Uh, it seems to be a bad omen this season. But Devon Dodson is one of my favorite players on that team. And I think that he's going to be a big reason why they do make a, a, a big run in March. So he's a he's a good guy to watch. Yudoka Azabuki is one of my favorites as well. Big man, big presence. Um, he'll dunk just about every time he gets the ball. So I'm always a fan of that. And then Oklahoma State. Go Pokes! Yes! And they're going down to Texas to play Texas A&M, which I'm from Texas. So Oklahoma State in Texas is like my dream come true. So I'm a little bit biased, and I think Oklahoma State's probably going to win that bowl game. So go Pokes! Okay, you can be biased. That's all right. <laughs> and I think that you've informed us all pretty well on on uh, the state of affairs around your area in particular. Yeah. So that's all right, and, and we can say go Pokes. That's, that's fine. Um, <laughs> the, the final thing is, you are going to be broadcasting Saturday. So that is the big deal right now. Georgia Southern against Liberty in the, uh, let me say this right, FBC Mortgage Cure Bowl. It's in Orlando, and it is a 2.30 Eastern start time on Saturday. So where do the fans listen? I want to listen. I want to tune in and, and hear part of this and be a part of this history-making broadcast as well. So where do we tune in? Okay, so Sirius XM Radio and the TuneIn Radio app will both have it nationally streamed slash broadcasted. And then I think if you're in the Orlando area, I think it's like 106.1, but I think most of your viewers are probably outside of that area. So I'm guessing. I recommend Sirius and uh, the TuneIn Radio app. All right, that's where you find that, the Cure Bowl. That is Saturday, this Saturday, December 21st, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and, and most people listening to this broadcast probably would say, okay, that's 1.30 for where we are yes, here in the time. Midwest. Danny Welniak, thank you so much for taking time with us today on the Summit, and you are being cheered on as you go to Orlando and are a part of this, uh, this first. So do well, and we look forward to getting to visit with you again. You're welcome here anytime. Thank you very much. And any of your viewers who want to send a few prayers up for me to um, have a good call, I would appreciate that greatly. So thank you. All right. That's Danny Welniak here on The Summit. I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for watching. Please do like and share this video. Please do. And I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. We would be really grateful for that. In the meantime, God bless you. Have a great day. Thanks again for watching.